flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am growing cut flowers in upstate New York, zone 4B. And today I'm gonna to show you around parts of my flower farm. So right here behind me, I have 14 rows. Some are about 75 feet long, some are 95 feet long, and they're filled with annuals. And I'm going to update you guys on the progress because it's been several weeks since you guys saw this stuff. Now let's start right here with the dahlias. As you can see, there are several that are, I would say those are about three feet tall, the big ones, and there are still some that are only about a foot tall, but they're all growing really well. I don't see any signs of damage or anything like that. And I'm starting to get buds. I didn't pinch all of these, but I did pinch most of them. And I am starting to see some buds. And I have some exciting news. If you guys are new here, I grew something called, that I'm calling a Jessica Dahlia, because my sister Jessica bought me seeds because she was duped on the internet by a Photoshop picture. So we've been anxiously awaiting to see what those would actually look like. And one of the ones I started from seed is actually in bloom, so let's go check it out. So is it blue? <laughs> no, but it is beautiful. It's a single dahlia with just some beautiful butter yellow coloring. It actually has some pink striping on the back side of the petals. So I'm excited to see what the other ones look like if they're exact. I mean, I know they'll be very similar to this, but I'm wondering if any will have um, more stronger veining with this purple because that's kind of cool. So this one is an Arabian night and I pinched it oh about a month ago way right here if you can see where I pinched it and look how many stems are coming off of it. Um, they're they're a lot they're they're tall enough I'm excited I'll be able to use these. So this is the look at the zinnia. So a couple days ago in a video I showed you guys I'm gonna step in front of the camera here that some of my lower leaves were um, damaged looking and I started to rip them off and I treated it with a copper fungicide and so far they still look really healthy. Uh, the issue is not going away, but I don't really see it taking over or anything like that. And so far it's not affecting these blooms. These Baneri giant zinnias are huge. I actually planted this in a rainbow order and I wasn't sure where to put the corals and the pinks. so. I planted them right after the reds. So it goes red, coral, salmons, pinks, and then it goes into the oranges and the yellows. And then it starts up again in the beginning here with the greens and then purples. I also have the whole queen lime series in here. It's just, everything's coming really well. You can actually see like the stem length, like it's from my fingertips to my shoulder on this one. And I could, I would, pin, I would cut it all the way down to there so that I would have a nice long stem and then it would continue to produce. This, wow, this one's gorgeous. Wow, this is one of the Baneri coral, I believe, and it's absolutely stunning. It's got this apricot orange in the middle and then it, in the, or on the outer petals, it has this gorgeous color and then in the middle it gets this more orangey peach. And you can see, like, the size is, it's massive. I am loving these orange ones too. I mean, look at the size of that, it's massive. So we've actually gotten about eight inches of rain so far this month. You could see this is like a little bit of um, pooling water, but that's it down here. It's not bad at all. Even with that much rain, my ground can handle it and I'm thankful for that. I do have a little bit of what looks like Japanese beetle damage. But honestly, I'm not really seeing many Japanese beetle on the plants. I will hand pick them off when I see them. I do spray with Captain Jack's dead bug. I'm gonna have to do another application because we, we got another two inches of rain in the past 24 hours. So definitely need to do that. But I don't see, like, oh, here, here are a couple Japanese beetles. I don't have the soapy water here with me, but that's, I just pick them off. <sighs> These cute little zins, these are actually called the Little Flower Girl Mix, and this is from um, the Florette Seed Packet that I purchased, and they're absolutely adorable. I really love the pale pink. Some of it almost has like a, I don't know, like a metallic hue to it. It's beautiful. There are also some peach ones, and this is just a, a mix. Some of the centers are dark purple, some of them are uh, like a maroon, and then some of them are yellow. Really pretty.
This row here, actually, some of the fabric ripped. I used Bio 360. It's a biodegradable film made out of corn. And uh, it's the side ripped, so we had to cover it with a lot of extra soil and then also that giant rock. <laughs> but those are my succession planting of zinnias right there. And then way down, wee, those zinnias right there, those are called cupcakes mix. And uh, they're really cute. So right here you can see on the left, I have a succession planting of some basil and then the row is empty. I do have some stuff in the seed trays that's gonna go there. Um, it, actually, it's another succession of zinnias. So that will also be full of zinnias as well. And then right here, you guys can see, that's a whole lot of status. So I have a whole bunch of different colors of status. Obviously this one is the white patch, the yellow is next, there's apricot, there's blue, there's pink, there's purple. There are several different varieties. I think I also have like a, oh wait, I think one is a mix, so I'm not certain on that, but this is amazing filler. It actually, it's a little bit crunchy. It's a flower you can dry. These next two rows right here, we have a whole lot of gomfrina. I have pink gomfrina, lilac gomfrina, light pink gomfrina, carmine, orange, uh, and then fireworks, which is super cool. And I also have white gomfrina. And there's also one called a bicolor rose. Beyond the fireworks gonfrina, you can see the dusty miller is starting to fill out. It looks really nice. So in between the dusty miller and the light pink gonfrina, which is right there. Oh my gosh, will you look at that? Look at that shot. Wow, <laughs> that's what gonfrina dreams are made of. Okay, back over here. So right here, the scabiosa, you can see the little balls there. Yeah, let me. So these are uh, a whole bunch of different kinds of scabiosa um, and they're starting to get ready. Okay, now we're on the other side and there is nasturtium in the front here and then tomatoes galore. There are so many tomatoes, they're all doing really well. I'm super excited about all the San Marzano tomatoes. They're just looking absolutely perfect. So many of them, so many. I think I have 50 or 52 San Marzano plants in. And then down here, guys, I just threw in some of the hot peppers that did not sell um, at my seedling sale and just threw them in the ground. And we've been eating peppers off of these for a while. Uh, I threw them in an omelet the other day. I made a mushroom omelet. So good. These are actually called Anaheim Charger peppers and uh, also known as long hats. Right here, this is in front of the tomatoes. This is uh, lime basil, cinnamon basil, cardinal basil, a whole bunch of different babels, uh, uh, babels, haha, <laughs> basils. And uh, this is my second succession of basil. The first one I've been harvesting off of and that's way up in the deer fence. Right here I have what's called, supposed to be a white marigold and it's starting to start in. We'll see. Oh, my milkweed's coming up everywhere. I'm gonna have to get in here and start weeding. But in this right here, it's called winged amobium. This is a, an everlasting, um, that's starting to throw up some stems and they're decent, they're about 18 inches. Uh, this whole thing, there's probably, I don't know, a hundred of them. 
Oh, I have some foxgloves and stuff right here. We'll see how they do. There's a small patch of them. Um, and then I don't, I don't, I honestly don't remember what that stuff is. Um, what are you? I don't remember. Oh, African daisies. Yes, African daisies. Okay. Okay, back to these. These are some poppies and some have bloomed. Um, these are actually hens and chick poppies. So the pot is supposed to be, I don't know, like really cool, but it's kind of, I don't know. It's not doing what I think it was supposed to do yet. And now we've come across, wait, there's a bug. Let me see it. Get away. The wheat. So obviously I'm growing these for little fillers. This is a silver tip and I also have a black tip. Um, and then behind it is a, I think that's lime millet behind it. Yes, let me zoom out. You can see the green behind it. That's lime millet. Kind of sounds like a cornfield. Aren't these guys cool? Like, they're just cool. And actually you can harvest these now or you could wait until they're fully dry and you can harvest them dry. They're great dried as well. So after that, we have some stock. Some of it's growing upright, but for some reason, this beautiful one decided to fall. <laughs> we have had some torrential downpours. This is a single flock, or flock, stock. <laughs> and then down here at the end, we have snow on the mountain euphorbia. More dusty miller, lots more. So lots of empty holes in this section, and that was my fault. I left out a tray and it fried. I do have about 30 survivors though, and these are star flowers. So they will produce a lot once they get going. Um, I just let them fry in the tray. And then from here all the way down, these are straw flowers. The bigger ones are, are toward the end and they're gonna start to really produce for me soon. Hopefully, cross your fingers. This brings us to Celosia. Lots of it. So after the Celosia, we have some Larkspur. These were the plugs that I got late and actually they're just starting to butt up. You see this one's got a little bit of an early bloom right there, but they're about uh, 18 inches tall and looking good. And then on the other side of the Larkspur are the, uh, I would say the third succession planting of Snapdragons. And then way here at the end, I have my only two eucalyptus plants that survived. Um, this one doesn't look so good. This one looks better, but still both small. Not sure if I'm gonna grow eucalyptus again. A lot of time and energy. This is the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus that is bushing out beautifully and it's starting to get thicker stemmed and just, it's looking good. So hopefully within the next month, it's gonna start to take off. Uh, from what I hear from Gina, she said it's slow to start and then it just takes off. Now we have this section of Sweet Annie and it smells amazing and getting quite large. I'm excited to use these in arrangements. This brings us to my favorite section, amaranth. I have a lot of amaranth, several different varieties and it's just looking so good. I actually did harvest off of it the other day and used a few of these longer top pieces in some bouquets. Really liked it. I just noticed uh, this one, it, it's rotten. We've gotten so much rain. It looks like the stem, it just rotted. Hopefully there's no bug or anything inside there. That actually could be the case. Oof. 
yeah, I actually think this might be a, uh, like a squash vine borer. I wonder if they eat amaranth. Yeah, I think something might have been eating the inside of that. Anyway, long gone. I hope you enjoyed this brief update. Also, some updates for you. The echinacea that I planted bare root, that is starting to bloom. I've got several different varieties. The loose neck. No, gooseneck loose stripe. <laughs> I actually have my first bloom on that as well. The plants are still small, they're first year plants, so they'll get bigger next year. I'm very excited about years to come with that, especially since my neighbor's patch is so bountiful. So that's an update here. I'll tell you my favorite place to be right now is, uh, well, okay, all right, I'm lying. The Gonfrina, <laughs> the Amaranth and Celosia because the colors are just amazing. And then the zinnia patch really is fantastic. And even though we do have a little bit of that issue in the bottom with the, with the spots on the leaves, I really do think that, that we're gonna come out of that on top. I have to be positive. I can't, I can't just get down and think that I'm gonna lose the zinnias because of the, a little bit of uh, extra moisture and humidity. So we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope that they're gonna be okay. I'm also planting a few hundred more, just in case. We'll be fine. That's an update of what's going on around here. And I'll, you know what? I'll take some shots inside the deer fence too, but I'm not gonna do any talking. I'm just gonna let the pictures speak for themselves. So thanks for sticking around and we'll see you soon. area it's so peaceful but I forgot to tell you guys something so the other day I was walking around here and something caught my eye and I don't have any other close to being ready yet but I have my first gladiola look at the size of this oh, it's like a sword actually it is a sword lily oh my goodness look how beautiful it is it's from the new uh, pastel mix that I got from Fred Nagel and Sons. Uh, beautiful, and it got me really excited for the gladiola season to come, so stay tuned.